Rob McCartney, the director of footy at the Mighty Hawthorne Footy Club, has been good enough to join us as we uh, as we say good afternoon to you, Rob, and th- welcome back to the program. Oh, thanks, Andy. Always love uh, spending a few minutes with you too. Well, let's Thank make you. It, let's make it more than a few if we can. How um you've returned? You know, you've, you've got everybody. How many people at the moment haven't you got um, participating? You know, at, at full tilt pre at the early stages of pre season. Uh, so. So obviously all the players are back, but you're saying in terms of, of maybe players who have got a little injury. Yeah, the point. ones you're just yeah. ho- holding back through the early stages, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're pretty lucky. Um, we, we didn't have any major operations over the, over the, the off-season, so all our boys are doing a, a, a portion of, of what the training is. Now, some are, are on restricted sort of programs. Um, young Chankwath Jath, obviously, uh, he had a little bit... Uh, of an interruption towards the end of the year, so we're sort of building him up a little bit. But he's he's starting to, to look like he'll be in in full training before Christmas. Um, and then we've you know Mitch Lewis was another one who who just needed to to be managed in the off season, so he's being built up a little bit again. Um, Jack Gunston, uh, we're just managing him back into into our program, so obviously getting another look at Jack. So realistically, there's there's no one who's sitting on the sidelines apart from from Chad Wingard um, with the Achilles that uh, isn't able to participate in, in a fair portion of what we're doing. Well, that's terrific. Uh, can you give us from inside the footy departments as much as you can, what the conversations were and the considerations given to to Chad in particular? So around? Oh, yeah. just keeping him, on, keeping him on the list yeah. and... Um, oh, look, yeah. look elsewhere just yeah, in case. Yeah, I mean, what, there, a lot of people might have <laughs> thought, you know, it would have been understandable had um, had there been a, you know, an agreed parting of the ways. But um, I think there's a lot of credit given to the footy club for sticking by him. Yeah. So obviously, initially, I suppose we go right back to when when Chad, you know, injured himself in the in the game late in the season. I think it was against the Bulldogs at at, at Launceston, um, and we'd already started some contract negotiations with him so first and foremost the thing that needed to happen within that was that you know us as a football club wanted to honor the start of those conversations even though we knew that you know the injury was a, a significant one that would obviously keep him out for the rest of 23 and, and you know a, a portion of the first half of the season in 24 um so that was that was probably pretty significant initially that we we wrapped our arms around Chad and, and also made him believe that we still saw that he had another chapter to write in his football career. Um, what then happened uh, as we worked up to, to the, the trade period and draft period is that um, so that we could work through those those phases, we needed to, to create a little bit of list flexibility. So with the, with the promise of, of obviously being picked up in the, the pre-season draft, um, Chad and, and Coop Stevens uh, needed to be delisted at that phase, um, but with the assurance that we were always going to pick them up in that pre-season period. Um, Collingwood, as they were able to do, um, obviously saw a little bit of a window of opportunity yeah, there yeah. to have a conversation, as only Graham Wright can. Yes. Um, um, and and I'll say that in jest because I'm, I'm very good friends with Graham, but yeah, they, they exercise their right to have a conversation with, with Chad around um, whether he might consider, you know, making a move to, to Collingwood in, in that period, which he had he had the ability to do. Um, but obviously, um, Chad made that decision that uh, he wanted to pursue the, the rest of his career with the, the Hawthorne Footy Club. And we're really excited that he has. He's working really hard um, in his, in his uh, rehabilitation of that Achilles and his He's actually in front of schedule in terms of what what he needs to be doing at this point in time, and and his commitment in the off season. Um, you know, obviously our players are uh, experiencing some, you know, in interstate and and um, you know across the country travel. Um, but Chad wasn't. He stayed in oh, in Melbourne. Amazing, he was yeah. in in at uh, at Waverley every second day doing his rehab with with Jack Price and and Ben Jansen and, and Andrew Lambert. Um, and his commitment to that has paid off because he's uh, he's absolutely advanced on where he should be right at this very time. That's great. And uh, I'd love to get your, your feedback so far. I know it's early days, and obviously the boys have got to go through and, and, and earn their stripes. But um, 
Just on the expectations on, on Nick Watson, oh. uh, firstly, it's looks great calm and down, calm down, Gazy. did oh, some no, extraordinary excited. things and <laughs> looks like he's got an X factor there that you can't teach, which is great, great news. Uh, so just... Tell us what the, the thinking is, whether he's absolutely a lock to be playing round one. And secondly, can you just um, just do a, a little work on, with... We've got, match, we've got match committee just after this call. No, no, no. But, <laughs> but, I'll, but, ring, I'll ring you back. No, in, in a perfect world I'm talking about, if it all goes to plan, which I'm sure it would, there'd be that expectation. But, but secondly, can you just have a word to your department there? I reckon we can come up with something a little bit sharper than the Wizard of Waverley, please. Uh, that's I, I reckon that we just need to workshop that a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, look. Let's let's start with Nick. Um, <laughs> he's a talented young player. Um, Superstar. And, and we were really excited when we got to to our pick in the draft, and and he was still available. Um, you know, we had a, a feeling that um, you know maybe North Melbourne might also be interested in Nick and, okay. and where their picks would fall. So we were we were absolutely super excited that he was still available at our pick. Yeah, um, well done. He's a he's he is a player, as you mentioned, that um has some some skills and attributes that that aren't actually taught through the AFL program <laughs> um once they get here. He he actually brings them to to the to the field before he arrives. Mm. And and that is that he does have a really uncanny goal sense. Um, you know, he's he's got a an ability to, to read and, and predict the play, you know, one kick, two kicks in front of what's going on. Um, and he's got a real appetite to compete uh, and, and, and be a, you know, not just a good player in the competitions that he plays, but be a great player. And we want him to, to build those attributes at, at AFL level. Now, round one's a long way away. But, you know, <laughs> no, but you... What I would say is, is that if he, puts, if he puts his best foot forward, he's, he's a player that's already shown that, um, you know, in a week's, week of training, mm. but he's not out of place on an AFL list. So he does everything right, um, just as, as other players will be trying to do. Though The beauty about Hawthorne this year is there's going to be competitions for spots at, at each uh, you know area of the ground. Our backs mm. have always had probably a little bit of depth. The mids improved in season 2023, um, you know, with the, the emergence of Day as a midfielder and Nash taking his game to the next level, Warple returning to the player that we'd seen him be and, and Newcomb just continuing the growth that we like. But we've still got Ward and McKenzie who are fighting for spots in there. And the front end was the area of the ground that, you know, I'd suggest that we didn't have the same competition for spots. And, um, you know, with what's happened both in the draft and the trade uh, period, I think we're now going to see that you're going to have to play well if you want to get a game. And, like and Nick's it. going to have to do that. But as... as um, Nick will be trying to do that. So will the bloke at the other end in terms of Luke Bruce. You know, everyone's now got to perform and, and, and earn their, their right in their spot. Rob, we'll let you go in a minute. J- just you mentioned, you mentioned James Warple on the way through there. Now, now that you look back, go back a year ago and, you know, com- I guess there were some concerns about, you know, where he was tracking with his footy after that spectacular start to his career. What, was there a key that, that saw him you know, rediscover the form in 2023 that we'd seen earlier in his career? I think, you know, there's a, there's a couple of, of things that I'd, I'd say around that. And I, I believe the, the relationship that, that Sam creates with his players is, is pretty significant in that. And, and as much as, um, you know, Sam, so for, for, for the walks in 2022 under Sam's obviously coaching the first year, he didn't, he didn't find that the game gave him back the, the time and effort that he put into it. The one thing Mork sees is he's a, an absolute example setter when it comes to training and standards. Um, but the game didn't return the favour in terms of, of performance. But mm. Sam continued to, to work closely with, with Warps and never lost both the trust and, and the faith in him as a player. And sometimes you've got to ride that period of time where you know, things aren't going so well without losing people in your corner. And I think that was the key thing for me. It was that, that Sam didn't waver in his belief that, you know, that Warps could be a player and, and an important player of our future, um, even though he did have a period where his form wasn't at the level that it mm. probably been at. So for mine, the key yeah, is, is, is probably Sam and, and the work that he put in with him. 
Well, there's a bit to look forward to mm. now that he's back, you know, where he was. And uh, hopefully 23 can be a launching pad for an outstanding five or six years to come for James Warble. Hey, there's a million other things we could there's get to. a lot to. of things I didn't I'm, get to. Well, you cha- you've already picked one spot in the first game for 2024. Yeah, and I'm, I've got to get to selection. Like where exactly. Of course you do. And then you've got to get to get, the... Get my man Nick the uh, Wizard of Waverley uh, in there, please. And you've got to go via the marketing department before you go home and change his nickname for us, Rob, <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. So, uh, as always, we appreciate you joining us on the show. Uh, have I oh know? Is it too early to wish people a Happy, Merry Christmas? Well, yeah. you, blokes, you blokes have only got two weeks to go. Well, I don't yeah. know. Mm. Can, I, can I get a gig on the radio and finish up? What? <laughs> you don't even get into December, you guys. <laughs> Hey, hey, there's a few others that have dropped off a few weeks and some months ago. Don't don't believe what you're reading in the paper either, Rob. We don't all get paid that much money. So, uh, um, you guys deserve it. Thank you very much. (laughs) Hey, have a great uh, holiday season and uh, all the very best between now and the start of the real stuff in 24. Thanks for coming on, mate. We always appreciate it. Good on you, boys. Rob McCartney. The boys upstairs are doing a big survey. Log on sen.com.au. It's a footy fan survey. Just getting some of your thoughts. Yes. Go on, hit us. Okay, let's uh, the, uh, rookie list. So one of the questions is: Should the rookie list be for players under the age of twenty-five only? Yes. No. What? Oh, so James Podsy Adley never gets on a rookie list. Um. Sorry. Okay. There should be an extension. There should be something about maybe the age is not necessarily the right way of uh, cutting it off, but. There should be something about where they're coming yes, from that, to be put right. onto the rookie list. You can't just be blokes no. putting back on the rookie list. No, 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 oh, no. Get rid of it all. Let clubs make their own decisions. Here is your list. Yeah, I don't mind that too. Just to here honest. is your yeah, list. No, I whether don't... they're forty or they're they're no. eighteen. Here is a list. <laughs> You make a decision on how you want to work your list, Mr. and then know. you'll be judged on how you yeah. make those decisions. I don't mind having a list that's supplementary to your primary list that has the chance to encourage players from outside of the main um, draft they're there anyway. pool. Well, well, no, why? No, they're they're no, encouraged no, 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 by no. This, is, this is the no, encouragement. No. Work hard, get good enough, no. and you might get on a list. Could we have a restrictions? You, you can only put one player back on your rookie list. From your primary list? Yeah. No, no, I think the Brooklyn... Just have none. Yeah. That, Just that, have a list. No, the one that... The, what Daisy's talking about is the list for the one you're talking about. Mm. The rookie list, if... As it was first initially constructed... It was called the for, SUP list. Yes. It was mm. not for blokes who were... You just can't find a spot for mm. them on your primary list, but you want to keep them on. It wasn't for that. Mm. So we lost our way with the rookie list. So get rid of it and just say, here's the no, number still, you've got. I still think there's a place for it. So I'm not going to be like you. But you have your way and I'll have mine. The there AFL go. opening you round. You just made the list. The <laughs> AFL opening round next year. Mm. Success or not, do you think it will be? Depends on what your criteria yeah. for what success big looks crowds, like. Big crowds. Yeah, of course. Tick, tick, tick. It'll be a success. Big TV ratings. Yeah. It'll be a success. Then. Hunted. It'll be successful. Yeah. What sort of crowd will we get in on the Gold Coast and sold the GWS? Out. It better be sold, sold out. out. Sold out. It better be sold out. You think sold. they'll sell out GWS? Well, it better be. I mm. hope they do. It better be. Mm. Is that is that the minimum requirement? It, well, so, yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're giving them, you're giving the locals up there an absolute free swing and mm-hmm. half volley. So yeah, good. Mm. It better be sold out. Mm. Do you think we'll do it the year after? If it no, you don't want to see it the year after. I don't. No, I've already said I, I don't, know, like, you don't it. like it. Yeah, I don't like mm. it. But so no, I, I don't think we will. Okay. Uh, the do bet, you think we will? Uh, if it's a success this year, they'll do it. Yeah. Same eight clubs? No, probably not. Rotated around. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, the bench. What should it look Carlton. like? In, well, they're there this year. What should the bench look like in twenty twenty four? Same as this year. Four on a sub. Just four on the bench. Just five on the bench, or five in a sub. Give them five and drop rotations. Could not agree more. You can have another player. You want another player? You can have another player. Yep. We're going to take fifteen. Why, we need, why do we need to drop rotations now? Because the I think the game's game, in pretty good nick. No, I think it? the game would be better. The game would be better with fewer rotations, more spread. You leave the good players on the ground for longer. Mm. Uh, KB was banging mm. on about this twenty years ago, and he was right then, and he's he's righter now. Well, he had <laughs> yeah, he had the extreme view though. Well, he did. But he he was... went back to just three. Well, four. If you have four on the bench, you're in, you're on and you're off, and that like old school. No, well, I, yeah, no. I, I think, think he was like, no, no. If you go on, it makes the and coach, you're off, you're off. It makes the coaches coach more. Mm. It Hopefully. creates more matchups. You don't. It creates it, it maybe encourages a bit of a return to a bit of positional football, 
Oh, I'm all for it. I'm Should f- AFL clubs be allowed to trade future picks more than just one year yes. ahead? Yes. I yes. think so. Totally. That makes make sense. A hundred. It, yeah. It because it's bold. Pick a hundred. Yeah. Uh, no, 100%. I agree oh, sorry, with you. Right. Uh, yeah, no, because agree. you can, people are at different stages of their development, and clubs need to have a bit more flexibility in order to achieve their goals. And if you can do that and, and trade ahead, now I don't think it should be, you can't go 15 years ahead. There, there probably needs to be <laughs> no, some. That's probably a little bit too. There much. needs to be a limit. <laughs> but what, what would the limit be? Three? I reckon three. three. Yeah, I reckon three. Three to me. It sounds mm, about right. I'm with you. Uh, how should the AFL tweak the national draft? No father, son, or academy picks first round. Remove academy picks from the first round. Increase cost of matching bids. Remove free agency compensation, or just leave it. Well, the answer, the easy answer for me is is well, the realistic answer. I should say mm. is C. Is just increase the cost. Now, ideally, I think as Andy and I discussed last week, or it might have been the week before, is that um, there could be an argument that would. Put in place, we'll get rid of it, get rid of the, it all together. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. So if you're talking about something that's realistically mm-hmm. possible, then I reckon uh, C. Remove free agency compensation for me. Yeah, I'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. Yep. Mm. But yep. why should clubs that have developed these players for seven or eight years in their academies have to pay more? Uh, because you've got these anomalies where you can get so many more picks and it's an unfair advantage. But how often have. does it? Like the Gold well, Coast four in one year is not going to happen that often. Well, you don't know that. I guess time will tell. But shouldn't um, we be celebrating the fact that four players have been homegrown in Queensland instead of sooking about it? Well, I don't think anyone's sooking oh, about yes, it. Yes, they are. Bit of sooky, sooky. Well, we're Bit trying to be sookie. fair about it. That's what Father we're trying sons. to be. Father sons. Hmm? That's not fair. Father sons. Well, again, I think if the compensation is right, then it's a way you can keep it in because I, I, I think they want it. So let's not argue about whether you should or you shouldn't. It's in. <laughs> let's figure out a fairer way for, for clubs to pay the appropriate amount of compensation.